My name is Namri Desai and I make games. More specifically, I'm making a 2D top-down melee combat game called Tsuchigiri. In short, it's a bit like Hotline Miami, but with samurais and a little bit of ape out sprinkle lot top for flavor. But enough chit chat, let's make games. Last time we talked about how I built the basic combat system for Tsuchigiri and how important it is to get your shit together early on. In this devlog, I'm gonna walk you through how to put together a basic AI for your combat game. With Inside, making an AI is not really different from the rest of programming. If you boil it down to its essence, it's a bunch of if conditions. It's a sequence of rules that flow from one another. But when I started off, I had no idea how to make one. The extent of the AI in my previous games was follow this set of waypoints and continuously attack, or walk left if you find something, hit it. AI seemed unattainable. Reserved to the elite minds of Elon Musk, Tony Stark, my cat, not me, I was forgetting something crucial. Games, like films, don't have to do the exact thing they want to show. When you're making the set, you don't have to build the whole city. You can just build a room where the action takes place. Games can fake it too. So how do I do that? Think about a behavior you want to replicate. In my case, I want the enemies to attack the player on sight, but I also want them to be scared for their lives, to be careful. Cut down the behavior into smaller chunks. Being careful, what does that actually mean? It means the enemies don't run headfirst into combat. It means they don't just charge the player, they wait. Split the behavior into actions. What are all the possible actions the enemies could decide to do every second that passes? There's a moment where they don't know about the player, and there's a moment where they just saw the player. There's a moment where they hesitate, another when they attack. Put it all down. Define the conditions for the behavior. When does the enemy switch from one action to another? What does it do until then? That's where the finite state machine comes in. A finite state machine is a programming pattern where you define a finite number of known states or here actions and define the conditions to transition between them. At any point in time, the state machine can only and only be in one of those states. That sounds great, no? Like exactly what we need, right? So let's just do that. No? No? I'm stupid, so I did not. For a whole week I was coding and coding and making a mess all over the place. I was nesting if statements upon if statements, making bullions the size of the world, eating spaghetti for breakfast, lunch and dinner, and it wasn't working. My enemies looked like they watch my YouTube videos on a cinema screen. If your retina enjoys its regular dose of white flashes and questionable humor, don't forget to subscribe. Do yourself a favor, don't make the same mistake I made. If you're looking to make your first day for a game, look up how to make a finite state machine in your engine of choice. It'll save you a lot of time and headaches. In my case, I didn't have to build one from scratch. I just used Unity's built-in animator. Like this, we can switch from the patrol state to a hesitation state to then attacking with a nice graph showing it all. So pretty. So let's see what my enemies are actually doing. The enemy waits for the player and when detected, charges them to bash their face in. Now that this is all replicated within a state machine, we can add a new state between the player detection and attack phase. I want them to be careful, prudent. I want them to feel like, you know, they're alive and they have families waiting for them at home. Easy stuff to code. In order to fake that, the main thing I wanted for the AI is that when they approach the player, they don't necessarily attack directly. I want them to wait for an opening. Here, the enemy will reach a circling distance, which I define to be a relatively safe distance. And when in the hesitation state or circling, the enemy will always try to keep its distance from the player. Whilst in that state, I've put a timer running. Roughly every second, the AI rolls a 100 phase die and based on the die roll it will decide whether to attack or keep circling. So yes, the behavior is actually random now. We will find out later on. But remember what I said about faking it. It's all about creating an illusion. Bit by bit we're building the pretense, adding tiny details as we go to make it look like the enemy has inner thoughts. When you wrap it up with animations and dialogue, it starts to be believable. Now that we have a state machine in place, we can add new behaviors easily. Want the enemy to be able to parry? Sure, I'll just add a state here and link it with another probability. Want the AI to run away? Okay, I'll just add another state with a new condition. Now we've got a system that can grow, each behavior contained within its own script, all neat and tidy. Alright, we've got a basic architecture for the AI, but how do we make it actually do stuff? First thing first, movement. AI movement is slightly more complicated than player movement, just a tad. That's because an AI needs to take into account a whole lot of parameters that the player just does without even thinking about it, like don't move into walls for example. We're telling the enemy unit to move towards a location, that may be the next patrol point or the player's location for example. If we put a wall on the straight line from the unit to its target, the unit has no way of knowing that there is something in its way or how to deal with it. That's where pathfinding comes in. Pathfinding does exactly what it says on the tin. It finds an unobstructed path towards the target. There are a couple of ways to implement that. I chose one of the most common ones, which is the A star algorithm. It was even used in Pac-Man, so yeah, you must have seen it around. I'm not gonna dive into the implementation of the algorithm itself though, because I just didn't do it. I'm using Aaron Grandberg's A star pathfinding project asset for Unity. Check it out. So essentially, frame by frame, we're now giving an intermediary location to our unit that gets them closer to the target. To move the unit itself, we could just apply a force in the direction of the next point in the path. I tried that, it didn't work out really well. If you only focus on going to your target, you don't really care about whether that target is occupied or whether there's more than one of you going there. You'll just end up rolling your way through like a rugby match and it's not pretty. After some research online, turns out some smarter people than me have found a solution to that issue that works really well. These are steering behaviors. Instead of adding a single force in a direction, we're going to calculate a combined force taking 
taking various elements into account. This will give us a more natural looking movement, but also provide some much needed functionality. The three steering behaviors I'm using so far are Seek, Arrival and Separate. Seek is the default movement force towards the target. Arrival makes sure we don't overshoot past the target, slowing us down before getting there. Separate makes sure that if there's other units around us, we're not just gonna roll our way through and gonna give them some personal space. I then sum these three forces up to get a new force that fulfills all three requirements. Sounds easy and obvious when you lay it out like that, but it took me about two, three days of tearing my head apart trying to figure out why my circle behavior was so jittery. When I added the arrival steering behavior in, it solved it straight away. Powerful stuff. For the combat functionality, we already implemented the system in the last devlog. The key thing to note at this stage is that I had built the logic in a separate fighter component that does not care if you are the player or the AI. Making it independent like this from the get-go means I don't have to rework anything, it just works. I just have to hook it up to the different states in the state machine. So what's left to do is tweak the variables until the movement feels just right and the combat feels unpredictable but fair. I'm really happy with how it feels so far. It's not perfect, but it's fun. And I love trying to juke the enemies by rotating at just the right angle to avoid their weapons. Nice. I think that's my time. In the next devlog, we'll add more polish to the combat system and look at the different enemy types I want for the game. If you don't want to miss future updates, don't forget to like and subscribe. It really helps grow the channel. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.